It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Here we go. Chapter 2, lesson number 9, Implicit Differentiation 1. So, let's say I asked you to differentiate x squared plus y squared equals 1. Well, the first thing you'd probably think is, ooh, I need to rearrange that to get y equals. And if you rearrange that, you would have y equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. With both of these, what you would say is that when it's in this form here, x squared plus y squared equals 1, you can say that that defines y implicitly in terms of x. So in other words, you've got x's and y's just on the same side. If you have this equation here, so you've got y equals, so you've got y on one side, x on the other, then you can say that defines y explicitly in terms of x. So on the right hand side, we've only got x's over here. However, if we were asked to differentiate x squared plus y squared equals 1, well, I suppose that's easy enough to do. We can rearrange that easily enough, and then we can differentiate. But sometimes what we'll get is something that's a bit harder than this that we would have to rearrange. So what we need to do is we need to find another way to differentiate that would save us having to rearrange first. And there is a way to do that. So as it says here, there is a way to differentiate and find dy by dx that does not require you to rearrange the equation first. Boom! Mind blown! So, the way you could work out in this one here, if we were differentiating, well, if we differentiate x squared, that's dead easy. Differentiate 1, dead easy. If we differentiate y squared with respect to x, here is how you would do it. So, what you do is... You want to differentiate with respect to x. And what we want to differentiate is our y squared. The way you do it is you would do it just the same way that you would differentiate x squared. So if we differentiate x squared, you know you bring the power down, take one off the power. So differentiating y squared, we would end up with 2y. However, what we're doing is we're differentiating y with respect to x. So what you need to do in this case is you need to add in on the end a dy by dx, which shows that you differentiated y with respect to x. Similarly, if you differentiate y cubed with respect to x, Keris, what do you think you would get? Yeah, differentiate y cubed, you would get 3y squared, but what do you need to add in? dy by dx, you got it, yes, add in dy by dx because we're differentiating y with respect to x. If you differentiate sine y, what would that give you, dj? Perfect. Sine y is going to go to cos y, but again, you have to add in dy by dx. Good. If you differentiate e to the power of y with respect to x, what would that give you, Timon? Perfect, yeah. e to the power of y would just give you e to the power of y. It would just stay as it is. But again, you need to multiply by dy by dx. Good. And Tara, last one. If you have ln y and you differentiate that, what would you get? Yeah, ln something goes to 1 over something, so ln y would go to 1 over y. But on the end, Tara, you need dy by dx. Perfect. So you'd need your dy by dx. Let's try a few more examples. So similarly... Using the product rule, let's take this one on the left first of all. If we want to differentiate x times y squared with respect to x, note here you've got one function times by some other function. It's the product of two functions, so you do have to use the product rule. So u in this case is going to be x, and v is going to be y squared. Work out u dash and v dash, so u dash, if you differentiate x with respect to x, you just get 1. If you differentiate y squared with respect to x, Derek, you would get, good, you would get 2y, but then you would have dy by dx, perfect. From that then, your product rule, that means the derivative of x times y squared would equal u dash v plus uv dash, so you would get u dash times v would be 1 times y squared, which is y squared, plus x times 2y squared. Put the number first, x times y, just put that alphabetically, and we've also got dy by dx. If you're differentiating x squared cos y, once again, you've got one function times another function. So, you have to use the product rule. u is going to be x squared, v is going to be cos y. Work out u dash, so if we differentiate x squared with respect to x, we get 2x. If we differentiate cos y, that would give us negative sine y. But again, you need dy by dx. 
From there then, using the product rule, u dash v plus u, v dash would be 2x times cos y plus negative sine y dy by dx times by the x squared. So I'm going to put the negative first, then I'm going to put the x squared, and I'm going to leave the, cos, the sine y just on the end there. And don't forget, you have to have the dy by dx. Another couple of examples with the product rule. If here you've got x times e to the power of y, using the product rule, you've got one function times another function. So really it's x times e to the power of y. So u is going to be x, v is going to be e to the power of y, u dash will just be one, v dash e to the power of something will stay as e to the power of something. But here we're differentiating y with respect to x. So add in dy by dx. The product rule, u dash v plus u v dash, so the derivative of x e to the power of y will be 1 times e to the power of y plus x times e to the power of y dy by dx. And don't forget, really you should leave your answers factorised, so take out e to the power of y as the highest common factor. So if you e to the power of y, bracket, 1 plus x dy by dx. Next one here, if we're differentiating sine x times ln y, well, again, it's one function times another function. So it's the product. You're thinking product rule, u dash v plus u v dash. u is going to be sine x. If we differentiate sine x with respect to x, we get cos x. v is going to be ln y. If we differentiate ln y with respect to x, well, that would be 1 over y. But then we would add in dy by dx. From there, then, using the product rule, u dash v is going to be cos x times ln y plus u times v dash is going to be sine x times 1 over y dy by dx. From there then, what you can do is, well, you don't really need to tidy it up, but with this fraction, I've got 1 over y times sine x, so I could just take that as a sine x over y. Just treat the sine x as sine x over 1, then multiply the two fractions together. That would give me sine x over y times dy by dx, plus this bit at the start. Some examples then, the sort of thing that you would get in the exam, something you would have to be able to do. That is how you differentiate implicitly, but the point in doing that is to get an expression for dy by dx. So I'm starting really with this first example that you could get in an exam, although this is exceptionally easy. For this one here, if we want to find the expression for dy by dx, well, we don't have to rearrange it, first of all, because we know we can just differentiate straight away. So if we differentiate x squared with respect to x, that gives us 2x. If we differentiate y squared with respect to x, mark that would give us. Good, y squared would go to 2y, but you would add in dy by dx, perfect. And if you differentiate 4, well, that's just going to go to 0. Brilliant. Uh, from there... You want to get an expression for dy by dx. You want dy by dx equals. What I'd probably do, though, first of all, is divide every single term by 2. You can do that. So divide the 2x by 2. Divide the 2y dy by dx by 2. And divide 0 by 2. And you will get down to this. From there, we want to get dy by dx equals. So first of all, subtract x from both sides. or move the x over. And you would have y dy by dx equals negative x. And if you move the y as well, divide both sides by y dy by dx would be a negative x over y. Why? Because it's so much fun. Example two, find an expression for dy by dx, given that ln y equals x plus y. So for this one, again, you don't need to rearrange it to get y equals. We can just go straight in to differentiating implicitly. So for this one here, help me out, Taylor, what would you do? Yeah, good. So ln y, if you differentiate that with respect to x, ln something goes to 1 over something. So it goes to 1 over y. But you add in dy by dx. Perfect. And that would equal differentiate x with respect to x. That goes to 1. And if you differentiate y with respect to x, well, differentiate y is just the same as differentiating x. You would just go be left with 1. But because we're differentiating y with respect to x, you would add in dy by dx. Perfect. From there then, really what we need to do is we need to get dy by dx equals. To do that, what we'll probably do, first of all, is to get rid of this fraction here. And you can get rid of the fraction by multiplying each term by y. If you do that, multiply this part here by y, multiply the 1 by y, and multiply dy by dx by y. And that would give you dy by dx equals y plus y dy by dx. 
So we're just getting rid of this other fraction. From there, well, we need dy by dx equals. Make sure dy by dx is only on one side here. We've got it on both sides. So to get dy by dx from the right to the left, we'd subtract y dy by dx from both sides. If you do that, you'll end up with dy by dx take away y dy by dx equals y. From there, again, we just need dy by dx. What could you do here, Scott? Yeah, you would just take out a common factor. So take out the common factor of dy by dx. So we'd have dy by dx bracket. That would give us one take away y. And that would equal y. From there then to finish off, dy by dx equals, we'll divide both sides by one take away y. And we would then have dy by dx equals y divided by one minus y. Woo! Let's try another one. Example three, find an expression for dy by dx given that x squared plus xy equals two. Uh, for this one, what are you thinking for this, Victor? Why? Why are you thinking product rule? Brilliant, well done. You can see here you've got x times y. Well done, Victor. So product rule is going to have to be applied because we've got one function times another function. We've got the product of two functions, so we need the product rule. So product rule, you'd have u and v, then work out u dash v dash. Here, the product rule is just gonna be applied for this x times y. So we would have u is gonna be x and v is going to be y. u dash, if we differentiate with respect to x, that would give us one. Perfect, and if we differentiate y with respect to x, that would give us one. Perfect, but we don't need to add in dy by dx. Perfect, so we'd have one dy by dx. From that then, if we differentiate, well we know if we differentiate x squared, we will end up with two x plus, and if we differentiate this x, y, this is when we need the product rule, so u dash v plus u v dash. So u dash times v is gonna be one times y, which will be y plus u times v dash. So it'll be x times dy by dx. And that would equal, if we differentiate two, that would go to zero. From there, well, we need dy by dx equals. So what I would do is move the terms without a dy by dx just to the other side. So subtract two x from both sides and subtract y from both sides. That would leave us with x dy by dx equals negative two x take away y. And then from there, if you want dy by dx and so on, you would have to divide by x. So dy by dx would equal, if you divide this side by x, that would disappear, leaving you with dy by dx. And you would take this side as well and divide by x. So we've got the negative 2x take away y, and we divide that by x. And that is your expression for dy by dx. Yeah! Example four, find an expression for dy by dx given that y squared take away xy equals x. For this one then, Mr. Green, help us out. What would you do? Yeah, again, you would have to use product rule. Perfect. And you're using product rule because we've again got this x times y. So because we've got x times y, it's the product of two functions. So we're needing to use that product rule. So first thing we're wanting to do is we need to think, right, well, if you differentiate this x times y, again, let's go to the side u is going to be x, v is going to be y. If we differentiate x with respect to x, you get one, and differentiate y with respect to x, you get dy by dx. From there then, if you differentiate two uh, y squared, you would end up with two y, but you would need dy by dx. Perfect, you need dy by dx. Then I'm gonna write take away, and I'm gonna put a bracket around what I would get if I just differentiate x, y. So, Differentiating that, and we get u dash v, so one times y is gonna be y, plus u times v dash, so x times dy by dx. And remember, you are taking that away, so you're gonna put brackets around the whole thing. Differentiate x, you would just get one, perfect. From there then, what it would do is just get rid of these brackets, so we've got two y dy by dx, that would be take away y, and then you would have take away the x dy by dx, and that would still equal one. From there, really, what you want to do is you want to have any terms with a dy by dx on the left-hand side, any other terms on the right. So we've got a dy by dx here. Perfect. Leave it. We've got a dy by dx here. Perfect. Leave it. But with this, we've got a takeaway y. So we want this to get rid of that takeaway y. Opposite takeaway y is add y. So add y to both sides. If you do that, that is what you would get. Uh, where would you go from there, Nathan? Perfect, common factor. Take out a common factor in the left-hand side of dy by dx. 
Brilliant. So dy by dx, a bracket 2y take away x, that would equal 1 plus y. And then you can easily get dy by dx by dividing both sides by 2y take away x. And that will be your expression for dy by dx. So that is your final answer. Woo! Example 5, find an expression for dy by dx given that x squared y squared equals x to the power of 4 plus y to the power of 4. For this one, Calissa, what's on your mind? Product rule, perfect. And it's the product rule because you've got x squared times y squared. We're multiplying two functions together. So the product rule is what you're thinking. u is going to be... Well, it's x squared times y squared, so u is going to be x squared. v is going to be y squared, because that's what we're multiplying x squared by. If you differentiate x squared, Calissa, you get... 2x. Good, you would get 2x. And if you differentiate y squared, you would get... 2y. 2y by dx. Perfect. Well done. From there, then, you can differentiate. So... You, this part here on the left, if you differentiate that, you would use the product rules. That's u dash v plus u v dash. So u dash times v is going to be 2x times y squared. Plus u times v dash would have the x squared times 2y dy by dx. When I'm doing that, I'm going to put the number first. So I'm going to have the 2. Then I've got the x squared times y. So numbers first and then put it alphabetically. Doesn't really matter if you get the other way around, it just looks a bit better. And then dy by dx. And that would equal, if I differentiate the right hand side, what would that give me, Andrew? Good. So you'd have 4x to the power of 3. That's what you get if you differentiate x to the power of 4. And if you differentiate y to the power of 4, Andrew? Good. You would get 4y to the power of 3. But Andrew, you need dy by dx. Brilliant. Well done. You would have dy by dx. From there, then, well, if you look, every single term is divisible by 2. So let's do that. Let's make the numbers a little simpler. So doing that, we would end up with xy squared plus x squared y dy by dx equals 2x cubed plus 2y cubed dy by dx. From there, really, what we want is dy by dx equals. So we need every term with a dy by dx on the left-hand side. So if we subtract 2y cubed dy by dx from this side, we do the same on the left. And any term without a dy by dx, so we've got an xy squared here. If we subtract that from the left, we do that with the right as well. Therefore, we would have our x squared y dy by dx. We're moving over the 2y cubed dy by dx. We'd have that as well. We'd have 2x cubed, and we're taking away this xy squared from both sides as well. So that's what we get down to. Uh, from there, Jack, help us out. What would you do? I think you factorise. You do factorise, yes. And what's the highest common factor? dy by dx. Perfect. So you would have a dy by dx times the x squared y take away 2y cubed. And that would equal the 2x cubed take away xy squared. Fantastic. From there then, to get dy by dx on its own, well, you're just going to divide both sides by the x squared y take away 2y cubed. And to finish that off, you could leave your answer as that, but again, you are best to factorise. So factorise the top, and you've got highest common factor there of x. So we'd have x times 2x squared take away y squared. And if you factorise the bottom, well, you've got highest common factor there of y. So you'd have y times x squared take away 2y squared. And that will be your answer. Try some of these questions once you are confident with implicit differentiation, just the basics that we're doing here, then you can move on to the other lessons with implicit differentiation. Try these questions though, make sure you are 100% okay with them before you move on. Good luck, it's in the booklet, page 32. Best of luck. Bye. Bye-bye.